Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. The anti-inflammatory diet explains what are the five categories of foods that you want to avoid to minimize inflammation. The five categories are gluten, dairy, soy, nightshades, and lectins. Today, we're going to go over the problems with dairy. So let's get right into it. There are certain populations who have lactose intolerance. Lactose is a sugar found in milk, and the certain populations have low lactase. Lactase is the enzyme that breaks down lactose. So if you can't break down the lactose, you're going to have some symptoms. These patients will have bloating, gas, cramping, diarrhea, and it will disrupt the gut microbiome. Once you disrupt the gut microbiome, you're going to increase your inflammatory load or systemic inflammation. Okay, so a lot of the Asian countries tend to be uh, lactose intolerant, so they don't often drink milk. Now, number two, casein and whey protein. Some people have immune reactions to casein and whey protein. Now, there is a <clears throat> protein called beta casein A1, which when digested releases beta caseomorphin 7, which creates inflammation. So it activates the immune system, increases inflammation, and causes digestive issues, right? So casein A1. <clears throat> I'd like to make a quick announcement. We are running a 14-day anti-inflammatory challenge on our membership site called Holistic Health Champions. The challenge will start on December 2nd. It's not enough to know all the information. It's important to have the proper guidance, accountability, and for us to guide you through the steps. Now, if you're interested, we are providing a, a discount of $29 per month for our membership site. It's the lowest it's ever been. We're gonna run this promotion until December 1st, and the challenge will start on December 2nd. If you're interested, please sign up on the link below. Number three, saturated fats. Will increase inflammation, especially in those people who are either obese, overweight, or people who have metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome is where you have this increased uh, what we call fat adiposity or fat around the waist and they have elevated triglycerides right these people will have increased inflammation they have more susceptibility for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and will increase the risk of cardiovascular disease number four insulin and insulin growth factor one stimulation Basically, this helps the cow or the calf to grow. But in humans, it may cause inflammation, acne, cancer, and cause insulin resistance, or what we call prediabetes. So it's not always good to have these factors elevated in our system. It also will impact gut permeability, or what we call leaky gut, right? It will increase inflammation, and sometimes it will trigger autoimmunity because some of the proteins in milk, uh, the way it's broken down, the amino acid sequence looks like the human tissue. So the body actually can trigger an autoimmune process. It can also create issues with irritable bowel syndrome. Number six, histamine and allergic reactions. For those people who have significant seasonal allergies or year-round allergies, milk can be a trigger for histamine. Therefore, it can create itchiness, swelling, hives, and can lead to systemic overall inflammation. Now, it doesn't mean that milk is bad for everybody, obviously, right? There is a good population of people who may have issues one through six. And if you're going to introduce foods or milk or dairy in general, what you want to do is this. Do an elimination period for six to eight weeks of complete gluten-free, or I mean complete dairy-free. 
Once you can do that, you'll get a baseline of how you feel. And then rather than introduce just conventional pastured um, milk, what you want to do is you want to consider <clears throat> grass-fed uh, milk, whole milk, okay? Um, if unpasteurized would be better, basically raw, if you can find a good source. So you can reintroduce grass-fed whole milk. You can do A2 milk. Remember I said there's a problem with A1. So there is something called A2 milk. You can do kefir. And, or you can do lactose-free milk, depending on what kind of problems you have, okay? Now, if you're going to do an alternative milk, <clears throat> the safest actually is camel milk, followed by goat milk and sheep milk. So it's a little bit easier to digest, and camel milk tends to have the least amount of problems if you're going to reintroduce an animal dairy product. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.